Hello everybody, this is Rich Bendixson from Dashboard Gear. In this video, we're going to discuss how to connect to cubes in analysis services. When we first start an implementation with a customer, they're often confused on how to set up users and create connections uh, to the cubes. The first step in defining users is to uh, tie those individual AD accounts or groups to the roles on the cubes in analysis services. There'll be a separate video on how to do that. But in this one, assuming that they are tied to a role, they will be able to connect to the cubes using a variety of tools. In today's session, we're going to cover how to connect to the cube using Excel. Now, how you connect to a cube in Excel is going to vary depending on if you are using the very first time you connect to the cube versus a second time. For the very first time you connect to a cube, what you do is you go to the data menu in Excel and the menu items you're going to see will vary depending on the version of Excel that you're using. Right now I'm using Excel 2016, uh, but what you'll similarly do in 2010 or 2007 or any of the other previous versions is you'll go to the data menu. You'll go to get external data, wherever that happens to be on the menu, and one of the options will be to connect to analysis services. So you will select from analysis services. It will then ask you for your server name. So I'll put in my server name. You just leave it at use Windows authentication. With analysis services, it uses Windows authentication to connect to those cubes. Once you do that, it will show you the available date databases that you have access to, as well as which cubes in those databases. So for example, I could select import data warehouse HR and it would show me the cubes. Now in this case, I don't have access to any cubes in that database. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down to another database. I'll select Kronos and it'll say Kronos time tracking. Or I could select uh, loss and DW and it will show me the cubes available in my Lawson data warehouse. Once you've done that, you can select a cube to connect to. So for example, I'll select the IC cube, which is inventory control. I then select next. From this point, it's now going to ask me to save this connection to the desktop. You have a couple choices here. Um, most people just select finish at this point and it will save it. Um, you may want to change where it says friendly name to something that means something a little more to you. As you see here, what it's putting is the server that it's on, the cube database it's in, and the name of the cube in that, in that database. Uh, so you can change that or leave that as is. Most people just hit finish at this point, which is fine. If you're sharing this connection with others, um, you might want to put that on a network drive, and that's what this browse function will do. We'll cover that in a separate session as well as the best practices as far as sharing these connections. But for now, we're just going to select finish. Then what it'll do is it'll, it's going to prompt you to create a pivot table on that uh, data. So it has now saved that connection. I'm going to go ahead and just say OK at this point to create that pivot table. So it has connected to that cube. So that is all that the steps that are needed to connect to a cube for the very first time. Each subsequent cube that you want to connect to, you will repeat those steps. Now, I'm going to go to another sheet here, and I'm going to go to a cube that's already been connected to. So uh, to go to a cube that's already been selected previously, rather than connecting from scratch, it's available quickly through the data menu. If I go to the data menu, you're going to find an option for existing connections. When you do that, it's going to show you all the previous cubes you've connected to. And so, for example, if I wanted to go to my general ledger cube, because I've already connected to that one, I would just select general ledger summary and select open. It will then go right into connecting to that pivot table. So I no longer have to go through the steps to make a new connection uh, to the data. That has already been done, and I just select it from the list. So once you have your connections, it's very quick and easy to go to those. And that concludes this video on how to make a connection to the analysis services cubes. Thank you for watching, and we look forward to presenting further topics.